Hey guys, it's me, Egypt, and I'm back again with another video, period. Period. Please, 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 please ignore my hands. They look like freaking Smurfs right now because I was tie-dyeing and yeah, that's all I gotta say. Just ignore it. I know my hands look really bad and disgusting. I'm gonna try my hardest not to put them on the screen because it's gonna be distracting and I don't want you guys to be distracted, okay? So we're gonna get on with this. Basically, I already filmed this video and I just looked like trash, like quarantine was really getting to me. So I decided to do something with my hair, um, do something with my face, put some lashes on and come to you guys on here looking presentable, okay? Cause I wasn't before. But basically this video is going to be me talking about my experience being black at PWI because I feel like it's something that a lot of people talk about, especially on Twitter. It's always on trending on Twitter. Somehow the debate of HBCU versus PWI comes up on Twitter, which is really annoying because it's always the same things being said, the same points slash arguments being made so it's dumb it's a really pointless debate that does not matter but this video isn't about hbcus versus versus pwis it's about my personal experience at a pwi so i'm going to first start off with some background about the school that i go to and me so i attend the florida state university go Knowles, and i'm a second year first generation student first generation meaning that my parents did not attend college so i'm considered first generation and i personally will be the first in my family to graduate college so that's super good super um great accomplishment but it also comes with a lot of struggles being that my parents did not attend college they were unable to help me with the college process because they don't know anything about it so I personally had to do a lot of research and make sure that I was gonna be able to get to school without being in debt and that's exactly what I did I have always been in, interested in college since I was in high school I personally wanted to go to college my parents did not tell me Egypt you're going to college like Egypt wanted to go to college and that was my main goal when I was in high school was to make sure that I can get to college for free that was my goal and I achieved that goal right now I attend Florida State and I am also a care student which is a program that Florida State has for first-generation students and they basically help us guide us throughout our college experience and ensure that we will make it through one debt free and two as easily as possible because of course it's not gonna be easy but as easy as they can make it they do it so I'm really grateful for the care program at FSU and I'm really grateful for this opportunity that I have to attend such a, a great university for free so with that being said, I'm going to give you guys the demographics of FSU. Okay, so FSU has about 40,000 students. 8% of those students are black. 8, just 8, just 8%. Yeah, 8% is not a lot. <sighs> so being that there are so many Caucasians that attend my university, there are not many black students either and the care program kind of tries to bring more minorities into the school but it's still not going to be enough honestly it's never going to be enough because there are so many white people there a lot of people think that fsu is like pretty diverse because we have the care program but that's not very true. Once you are outside of your care class and you're outside of the people who came in with you during the in the care program and you kind of step out and you're in your bigger classes, your classes in your major and stuff like that, you will notice a huge difference. Because when I first came in the summer, I was in classes with all the other people who came in with, through the care program. So my classes were kind of filled with black people. But as soon as fall semester hit, reality smashes all in the face like the care program kind of kind of like made us think that this was going to be kind of different because we were just all together we were all living in the same dorm we all kind of had the same classes so we kind of saw each other a lot but as soon as fall hits and you're in your own separate dorms you're in your own separate classes you see what fsu really is 
walking through campus I sometimes do feel like a fish out of water it's like I don't like going a long time without seeing someone who at least looks like me like even if we're just walking past each other and it's for one second I see another black person I'm like oh, I can breathe like oh my gosh I wouldn't say it's like horrible because it doesn't really bother me obviously because I go there but it's still like damn like where are all the black people at you know like when you go to a function and you're the only black person there and you kind of feel like everybody's looking at you or you feel kind of like out of place that's sometimes how I feel on campus I have had classes where I am the only black person in that class literally just me or me and like one other girl or me and one other guy or I am the only black female in the class and that honestly is not a very good feeling it really isn't but I'm just going to school to get my freaking degree and go I go to class and I come home so those situations they kind of like make me feel uncomfortable sometimes but it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable to where I'm not gonna go to class or I'm not gonna go to campus because I'm seeing too many white people like no I'm going there to get my education and that's that and that's another reason why I feel like it doesn't matter what school you go to whether or not you go to a PWI or HBCU it literally doesn't matter if I'm going to FSU and I'm majoring in communications and you're going to FAMU and you're majoring in communications both of our degrees are going to say communication so so it really does not matter where we got it from as long as we get it you know like I am all for black people in higher education so I don't really understand why a lot of people try to have the debate or try to say oh if you're black you have to go to HBCU you shouldn't be at a PWI if you're at a PWI you're a traitor a lot of people really say stuff like that I'm like bro you sound kind of really dumb right now because where I go to get my degree should not matter as long as I am getting my degree. We should be supporting each other where, no matter where we are because at the end of the day, I am still black and you are still black and we are both black and educated and that's the best thing ever. I need to get my notes. I want to make sure I touch the important topics that I want to touch so we are here. Okay, so one thing that you have to remember when going to a PWI is, well, anywhere in the world, no matter where you go, racism comes in a lot of different ways. Not everybody is KKK hood, Confederate flags type stuff. No, like people will be super, super subtle with their insults and prejudice and racism. For example, microaggressions. A lot of people say things very subtly and casually in conversation that are racist and some people don't even realize that they're being racist because it's so subtle and casual so some examples of a microaggression would be like oh you're pretty for a black girl or you're pretty for a dark skin that's an insult you you think that you're calling me pretty but because you said that I'm pretty for a black girl implies that black girls are ugly that is a microaggression. Another microaggression is, these are examples of microaggressions that I have gotten. You don't act black. You don't act like most black girls. You don't look like most black girls. That's racist because what is, what is a typical black girl to you? What, what are black girls supposed to act like? What are they supposed to act like? Or a great one. You don't sound black. You talk so white. You talk white. The what does that mean let me know because I hate it I hate it so much because I talk like a normal human being or because I talk proper and with good grammar means that I talk white means that I act white means that I'm not black my skin color is not enough apparently for me to be black apparently this means nothing nothing at all nothing so I had this experience right in one of my classes we had two exchange students from the Netherlands and I'm not saying this to be mean or insult the person or any or bash anybody because I'm sure they just don't know better they probably don't really see black people that much so I kind of just took it as an ignorant comment more than like a racist insulting comment but I had this class you know, I always have my hair done. My hair is usually done. I have either on a wig or braids or something. And I'm always changing my hair. Like, I change my hair pretty often. So, one day, I didn't have a wig on and I didn't have braids. I went to class with my natural hair because I just didn't feel like doing my hair. And I just 
had my hair out, wanted to breathe, blah, blah, blah. It was an afro, whatever. I walked my little cute self into class, my little afro, and one of the study abroad students was like, Oh my gosh, your hair. And in my head, I was like, like, dude, what did I just say? Like, y'all heard that? You heard that? You heard, or, or am I tripping? Then she proceeds to say, It looks so cool. And I'm just like, Cool. It looks cool? What does that mean? Why does my hair look cool and why doesn't your hair look cool? why does my hair have to look cool like it's not a magic trick it's not an animal it's not like a foreign object so why does it have to look cool why can't it just be hair and i just had to kind of smile and pretend like that didn't happen because i knew in my head that she probably doesn't know any better she probably hasn't seen anything different and she probably didn't mean anything harmful by her comments it was just Surprising to her, I guess an afro is surprising to her. That's sad girl. You should there's some bomb afros that she needs to see because Dang you never seen an afro before The hair is always a fascination. It's it's just I Don't get it. I don't I feel like when certain things are being spoken about or when certain topics come up or even just in general there's a pressure of me having to represent like the whole entire black community I got every last black person on my back when I speak that's how I feel that's the pressure that is put on you and I feel like I am it's like I have to sound smart or I have to say something right sometimes you feel like you don't belong because that's just how the atmosphere feels it's not like no one really has to say anything you can literally feel when you're speaking you have to come correct being that there's 40,000 students at my school there are classes that will literally have over 500 students in them and even in those super big classes you can look around and you can count the amount of black people on both your hands out of 500 that is crazy it's crazy it's weird at first when you look around and you don't see anything familiar you don't see anyone who looks like you but that's not what I'm focused on most of the time I'm focused on trying to get through this class listen to this boring lecture take some notes and leave and go home that's it i'm not worried about anybody else but myself that's how i survive i guess it's not really about surviving it's just about just knowing that you're there for you and not for anybody else and some white people are cool like not all of them are racist or weird so that's the whole school situation i've been around white people i did not grow up in a black neighborhood i did not go to a black elementary school or middle school or high school so i'm kind of used to this so it might be different for someone who went to an all black but high school now we got a pwr and you're like oh my god all these white people i didn't even know white people like because that's how it be sometimes but for me I always knew they existed I just I didn't know there could be so many of them at one time <laughs> like damn so the last thing that I'm going to touch on because this video is probably going to be like 20 30 minutes long of me talking I'm going to lightly touch on why I do not attend an HBCU but if you were listening in the beginning of the video you kind of know why I personally made good grades in high school I could have went anywhere I probably applied to not like Ivy Leagues or anything. I will only apply to Florida schools because I'm from Florida. Realistically, I probably could have gotten to any Florida school that I applied to. But I heard about the care program at a college fair at my high school and I was like, ooh, money. That's all I heard was money, 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 money. So I applied, I got in, and I didn't bother with any of my applications after that. After I got in, I was like, why do I need to finish any other application? Some people do hella applications just to flex all the schools that they got into. No, it don't matter. After you're attending one school, it don't matter about all the other schools that you got into. Stop being weird. But yeah, after I got into FSU, I was like, ooh, okay, bye UCF, bye everybody. Like, I'm not even gonna finish your application because I got into the care program at FSU and they gonna give me money. And that's it. That's why I'm at this school, because of the money. 
I am going to be graduating. I am going to be getting my degree in whatever the fuck I want to, debt free. Nobody else was gonna give me that, so I didn't go. That's that. That's that. That's all I'm saying, because I don't want to go any further into depth about the HBCU versus PWI argument, because like I said, it's dumb. Okay, moral of the story is, it doesn't matter what school you attend, because wherever the money's at, that should kind of influence your decision. Maybe you're not so worried about money like me. Maybe you have money and you can go to any college you want and your parents are gonna pay for it or you have a fund or a trust or something that's gonna pay for your college education so you can choose where you wanna go. Me personally, I ain't got no money. My parents don't got no money. So YouTube was gonna go to whatever school was gonna pay and that's how I made my decision. So the sun went down during this whole video, so now it's all dark. I'm going to stop talking now because that's my cue. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys got some insight on my personal experience. Again, my personal experience. Somebody else's experience might be different than mine, but this is my experience. It's not that bad. That's all I have to say. I worry about myself and that's the best thing that you can do when you attend any school you won't get into any problems when you start worrying about yourself and that's that so decide where you want to go not based off of the type of people that are there but based off of you and how you feel about it if you feel like you can't be around white people then go to hbcu if you feel like you want to be in the atmosphere of hbcu which is a nice thing like it is nice going to a school and feeling like that togetherness I don't personally know how it feels to go to HBCU, but that's what a lot, a lot of people like to say. They like to say that it feels like family, which I'm sure it does because you're around people that look like you, that are doing the same thing as you and trying to get to the same place. But on the other side, there's still black people at, at PWIs. You just have to join the organizations and find them, like find friends that look like you. It's not gonna be the same experience as going to an HBCU, but at least you'll feel not alone. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys stay tuned and listen to me talk about other things. I'm gonna be posting very, very frequently. So you're gonna see my face a lot if you do subscribe. So subscribe, like this video if you liked it, like it if you didn't like it. Comment down below if you guys go to PWI, your experience, what are your fears? What are some questions that you have that I probably did not address? Cause I will literally answer every comment that is made on this video. And I will see you guys in my next next one. Bye guys.